So I was asked a question on um, uh, being in being in a conversation or, or or an argument or something, and then trying to solve it at that level of consciousness, or or, or yes, when when there's conversation, let's say I'm having an argument with someone, then I'll be identified with my story and my judgments and my perception of that individual and uh, it will be very personal so that person will obviously be behaving in a way which is personally affecting me so I'm, I'm now experiencing separation I'm, I'm in separation, that person seems to be in separation my perception of them is that I'm separated from them and there's a disagreement or there's a grievance uh, with this person so at this level uh, my my consciousness level, uh, I mean, how I perceive them will just be a reflection of my level of consciousness. So if I buy into the story of how bad they are and what I see in them as being real, like they're a bad person and they deserve to die or whatever it is, so uh, then it's like I'm hooking into that. And so my, if it was like that, it says that I'll be hooking into hatred and revenge. Hatred and revenge. So basically I'm now at a level of consciousness where my solution to dealing with the situation is coming from that level of consciousness. Revenge and, and hatred. So I'm going to hire a hitman and get, and, get, and get them locked up. This is the way, this is the solution to deal with the problem. So that would be the level of, it's like the wave band. I'm tuned into radio revenge and radio hate. And my perception would be coloured by those emotions and the thinking, I'll be tuning up from radio revenge, you know, the ra which we all can tune into. There's like a frequency I can tune radio revenge, how to get revenge from people, and giving them various options on doing that. So I just pick up. There's the, uh, you know, there's the hitman. There's the car accident. There's various other things that can go wrong, and then that is the solution. They will disappear. Problem solved. You see, so it's like, so of course. But then, you know, there's different things to tune in to higher vibrations. Not necessarily to going, I mean, there's one thing is just to recognize it's an illusion, go to the observer, realize, uh, <clears throat> which is what The Course in Miracles says about forgiveness. It says at, at a certain point, you'll realize there's nothing to forgive. Mm -hmm. Now, the early lessons, it says, oh, God is the love in, uh, in which I forgive you for being such a bad, horrible person. So that would be an early lesson. That's what I call more dualistic. I'm in the illusion. There's a me and there's a you, and you've done mm. bad, and so I'm going to forgive you. For, for, you know, mm. You're separate to me and I'm separate to you, but you know, I forgive you. So I, in separation, am forgiving you in separation because we're two people who are different. So, but the later it says in the Course, you will recognize that there was nothing ever to forgive. Mm. So that, then, then that means now you rec that has healed. So there's the, been the healing of the illusion of the experience of separation between myself and others that no longer exists. So in that perception, let's call it the observing. Well, I, there isn't a me because there's an observer of that which I thought I was, which is my story and the body. And even I'm not my story or my body. If I'm not my story or my body, then no one else is a story or body. There's oneness, you see. There never was such a thing. But if you're observing, you can understand how other people might be confused that, oh, you think you're that story in your head and you think you're that body. And you, you're trying to call me a body in my thinking, but that obviously doesn't wash because uh, you see that as they're stuck in <clears throat> that idea of separation. So you might have, have compassion <clears throat> for them if you're in the observer and yet they're stuck in being a body in their thinking, in their story. Of course, in the observer, you realize there's nothing to forgive. Nothing is taken personally. Oh, I don't have a personal story, I'm not a personal body, and you're not a personal body, so this is all happening in the illusion, where there's nothing to forgive. But, uh, so, uh, I have had that, I had that as an experience, I have shared it. There was this woman in a spiritual group that I went, you know, and there was, you know, extreme dislike of each other, shall we say, mildly, uh, or even more intense than dislike. And, and something, and something just happened mystically, because... It's very easy when there's like strong feelings coming up to forget the observer mm. and become very personal. It's like you don't mm. remember to do the observer. It's like she walks through the door, suddenly there's a feeling, 
there's a story and I'm totally hooked in. There's no, no chance to remember what's observing right. that. So every time she'd come in, I'd, I'd go into my story and the feelings and there would be this story. And then one day, it so happened, and I could feel the animosity between the two of us, you know, we'd have this mutual animosity of each other. <laughs> this mutual love, we had mutual animosity. And, um, and then something, I don't know, mystically happened and said, well, what's observing this? And it was like, it was miraculous because in a split second, there was an observer of me and her in the whole room and it collapsed that personal story of a me and a her. And my perception of it was it was quite funny. Uh, that, uh, and there was no, nothing personal about it. And, and it seemed to have reverberated. She seemed to have got a glimpse of that. You know, the normal tension that was in the room dissipated. And, uh, and it, was a, it, was a joyful, it was a joyful experience. That, I, you know, suddenly the recognition that I was never that story. And none of this was real. That, you know, this mutual thing that had gone on, mutual... Uh, dislike of each other, identified stories of each other, wasn't real. So <clears throat> that was a, like a collapse from a very low vibration to a very high vibration and it's recognized. Um, one of the things is there's freedom, uh, there's a recontextualization, there's lots of peace and almost it can be seen like, you know, it can be seen, it was almost like hard to believe the story one was in before. It's like, it's almost like it doesn't, it's hard to like cling on to that story. Like, oh, you were a body and you were thinking and you were angry at this person and none of this is real. So that's what I call transcending. But, uh, but also is to know that every tool is good. And if you pray for a miracle to see it differently or pray to see Christ in her, uh, it might not take you to the observer, but it can, uh, it, it can boost you to a, a higher level of consciousness. So suddenly you might have compassion, you know, she's a sick brother, or, or you might see Christ in her, and you know, she's actually quite holy, you see. So, whatever it is. So those are, those are shifts in perception, they take you to various levels, but each, I think this is why Dr. Hawkins' work is so thin, because each level of freedom or, or consciousness has a different perception. You know, if, uh, if I'm in the vibration of fear, that very contracted, if I'm in the vibration of neutrality, then the perception is different. If I'm the perception of, um, of there can be conditional love. You know, oh, she's really, really lovely as long as she's not a, you know, B. The B word. And, um, and uh, but then that's like conditional love, isn't it? You're at the vibration of conditional love. I hope she doesn't say that again, and then otherwise she's lovable. <laughs> so, you know, I've had, you know, so but then, or you might get to the vibration of unconditional love. I'm a body, she's a body, but she's still lovable, whatever she does. So that's the vibration. Or you might go to the observer, which is, I'm not, the sto I'm not a body, she's not a body, there's nothing to forgive, this is just all an illusion. So these are different vibratory levels. Um, so, um, and any tool is good, whether it's feel the feelings, pray for a miracle to see a different place or into God's infinite life love, pray for a miracle transcendence, go to the observer. Sometimes it's just which one I'll use. I mean, every, every spiritual seeker has their arsenal of tools. I mean, I have my arsenal of tools. You know, they can be feeling the feelings. Um, I can also, I uh, also have this thing of disappearing people. You know, does anyone know how to disappear a person in a room? Uh, Okay, so <laughs> so it can it can disappear. Um, I think I always thought uh, I was this thing. Actually, it's an interesting thing. I can talk about it on camera. I so I, I I'm a hypnotherapist. You know, I'm a hypnotherapist. And uh, actually, if you go into hypnotherapy, uh, but also you go into spirituality, you realise that things exist out of belief or an attachment to perception. And if there's no attachment to belief or perception, it ceases to exist. Now, when I was training to be, when I was like watching all, you know, all of these famous hypnotherapists just to try and get tips from them, and of course it's very, very easy to put someone in trance and tell them that, uh, that the glass in the room doesn't exist. You know, and they'll like, you get, them to, get them out of trance. And you, say, and, 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 and you ask them, well, what do you see on the table? And you say, well, I can't see anything on the table. And, you know, it just doesn't exist for them. And that's the power of belief. I think this is quite interesting. Actually, it's gone on an interesting tangent. There was a, I watched this Paul McKenna video 
uh, which is really, really great. Uh, it's a long time ago, he's, he's one of those famous hypnotherapists. And they did this thing where, and I'll talk about it from a conscious, because Dr. Hawkins also talks about it. They would get this person, and you put them into hypnosis, into trance, and then you go, you're, you're in the Sahara Desert, and it's baking hot, and the sun's shining on you. And then you get, and they don't see this, because they're guinea pigs, you see. <laughs> They've got a bucket of iced water. If you might be able to find this video with just ice cubes in it. And then they put their hands while they're doing the trance in the iced water, you know, and they're in the Sahara Desert. And then they pull their hands out and, you know, they might have burns on it or something. Absolutely nothing to do with the ice cubes. So the, the thought was, is more powerful than what we in the collective agree as reality. Like it should be a frozen hand, but it had burns on it. So it's got to show that actually this world... Uh, Hopkins talks about there's nothing in this world that has power. Everything is coming out of thought. You know, we all have collective beliefs. Like if you put your hand on a fire, it should burn. Or if you put your hand, if you put your hands in a bucket of ice cubes for, for three minutes, it should come out very numb. That's what we all collective. But that those are all belief systems. You know, so the only reason a person exists for me is because there's a there's some kind of residual interest in them. So since I knew all of this as a hypnotherapist, then if, my, if there's something that hooks in, then it cannot hook in. And I think this is the great thing about doing the observer and understanding the power of beliefs. Things only exist if there's identification or if there's a belief in that, you see, and they don't exist. Not, that, I mean, it's on a different level. There is, no, there is nothing going on. You know, I had a spiritual teacher and he would always say nothing's happening. You know, in truth, nothing is actually happening now. There isn't anything happening now because in, 